Welcome to The In-Between, where shift happens. This podcast is for anybody who has ever found themselves in that space in between what was and what's going to be. That space where life happens. The moment between where we are and where we're going. That space that is often uncomfortable to sit in. The stuff of life, the ups, the downs, the moments of connection and insight, and the moments where we can't see two steps in front of us. We will ask all the questions, maybe find some answers, and generally work at being okay in the mystery of the in-between. And today we are talking about good grief or good grief. I'm, good grief. I'm, good grief. I'm not, I'm actually not sure, but I think we're going to find out. Good grief. Good grief. Good grief. I don't know. So we'll, we'll see. But this is part of our grief week here at Soul Evolution Collaborative and, uh, I was gonna say we've had fun doing it. I don't know. I don't know if fun's the right word, but it's it's been impactful and powerful to have gone through these uh, several grief events, and we have some more coming up towards the end of the month. But this uh, is a powerful conversation about grief. I think. Well, I think it's. I mean, I think it's fun in the sense of anywhere where we could normalize conversations about showing up authentically and allowing other people to do that to sit in emotions. I think that's. That's fun because it's that's so energy giving, I think. Yeah. For me yeah. at least. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And so yeah. if you are listening and you are new to this show, the way this works is we agree on a topic and one of us comes with questions. We ask the other one the questions. They've never heard the questions, and we have a very uh, spontaneous and authentic conversation. So Ryan has never heard these questions that I'm about to ask them about good grief. And I think let's just get into it. And, yeah, let's and, jump in. And really, the first question is kind of what you just mentioned, actually. Um, that that grief, the or the idea of, of like certain topics being things we can talk about, other things being things we can't talk about, and um, probably like a lot of those kind of topics. Like everybody has grief about something, probably a lot of things, um, and especially now, like. 2024 we've come out of some really like wacky years the past yeah. couple of years and certainly collective grief about a lot i'm i can only imagine like individual grief about all kinds of things and yet it is one of those topics i think that for a lot of people like we're not allowed to talk about the things we're grieving over like it's just not a socially acceptable topic in a lot of places and yet, at the same time, I think that has shifted considerably because of the last couple of years. Uh, so the first question, why do you think grief is being talked about a lot more now? Why is it more prevalent now? Is it is it OK? Is it finally OK? Like, can we talk about grief publicly? Well, I think it's OK. Yeah. I, you know, I think... Um... <laughs> Of course, it's okay. We're doing it's okay it. now. I said so. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, it's interesting. I think it, what what we're beginning to see, and I think it's more that we normalize conversations like this, and people are having these sorts of conversations, and definitely the impact of our you know collective experience over the past few years. But I think that it's this evolved understanding that I think we used to think about grief in kind of one context, you know, the death mm. or dying of an sure, individual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so those, those, that one context, you know, to really, uh, come to terms with our own morbidity and the, all, all the emotions and things that come along with that. But I think we're realizing what we're realizing more and more, maybe we knew it and we're it's just becoming talked about is that we experience grief all the time. So just think about it. anything, any, uh, any situation where your life turned up differently than you thought it was going to happen, right? That, that something mm. happened and you had this plan for your life or plan for whatever, and something happened. And now you're experiencing something that you didn't know that you were going to be experiencing yeah. or plan to experience, whether that is um, challenging relationships, whether that's a loss of a job, whether that is um, any a myriad of things, whether that is, people showing up in ways you didn't think that they were going to show up with. And so in any slight um, understand that life shows up differently than we thought it was, there's a grieving process. Yeah. There is a, 
what we thought was going to happen and what did happen. And that in between is where that process happens. And so I think that we are becoming more and more attuned of the importance of expressing our emotions, feeling our emotions, not stuffing them down or avoiding them and all that. And so I think that we're becoming more aware that grief shows up all the time, every day for folks. And um, there's so many ways that, that we process that both individually and collectively. So I think that's why we're seeing a lot more conversation around it because there's a lot, uh, it seems, this the, the language of authenticity and vulnerability are, are, are becoming at the forefront, right? And so that is really impacting um, our comfort in having these conversations because we're not the only ones having them anymore. A lot of other people are, right? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely fell into, the, I, I, lo I love that. I definitely fell into that uh, pitfall of grief is, grief is death. Or yeah. grief is what happens when someone dies. It looks like this, this little yeah, box. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. And, and yeah, it, it really is. It's it's so much more than that. I mean, it definitely is that. And that's still oh, a yeah. very important aspect um, that needs to be recognized and talked about. Um, but yeah, that, what a what an, uh, an expansive view of like, oh, yeah, all the things that I thought were supposed to happen and didn't. Yeah. When or it, weren't supposed to happen and did, or uh, yeah, holy cow. all the things, right? Yeah. Well, and I think also this understanding that there is no. We love to put like hierarchy on things, mm. like you know um, that one is more than the oh. other. But I think this, this grief this is harder than that grief for yeah. right, right. You know, it's uh, this uh, more, yeah. more one upping or, or 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 either one upping or we are minimizing our own distress mm. and our own emotions, and so I think that. Yeah. We are understanding, as we all have different uh, experiences of it, we're understanding there's no hierarchy, right? Mine's not any more than yours, that it's all valid. Like, all of our experiences are valid. All of our emotions are valid. Yeah. And even this conversation around, like, grief is not, I think, historically, we've understood of, of grief something to um, get rid of or process our way through or whatever. Like we do all the things so then we don't feel that anymore. Yeah. And what we're learning is that grief, we will never get rid of grief. Yeah. And that the goal is not to get rid of grief. Um, I think this idea of good grief is that this relaxing into that, we're not going to get rid of it yeah. because grief is a result of a relationship to something. Yeah. We're always going to have that relationship to whatever that thing is. The job, the relationship, the person in our life, you know, that that situation or that dream or that hope, right? Because we're here and that thing is there. We always have that relationship. So grief is always going to be there around it, but our relationship to it will change. Yeah. And and how that and how that outpictures in our life. And I and I wonder too if we're collectively, if we're kind of in this stage in history oh. where like we've opened the floodgates. Right. Like somebody yeah. poked the hole a while back and that just kind of like burst through and like permission was given somewhere. Like it's OK right. to talk about now. And yeah. all of a sudden. So I, I wonder if like collectively we're processing generations worth of grief that didn't really get processed. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, you know, as we're talking about, it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's probably a pretty big part of this, too. Right. Like imagine living lifetimes without really the opportunity to process grief. Like it either wasn't okay or there literally wasn't a place for it or the time for it or whatever, or we didn't know how, or it could be anything. And now all of a sudden it is something that is even, yeah. even like an inkling that it's okay to talk about. It's just gonna, yeah. all I of mean, that flooding out. I recently read this, um, a research article on collective grief, especially in um, the African American community, mm. and and this the impact of generational grief, generational trauma, um, and I think we 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 see that in lots of lots of people groups, and I think that often you know out picturing when we see all sorts of craziness out picture in our world, right? I mean, all sorts of um, 
uh, hatred and bigotry and, and all the things yeah. that I wonder, like, if we really began to, like, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. It's this generational, like, pulling forward of all of the things, the things that weren't processed, the things that weren't looked at, the things that weren't addressed, the things that just got woven into our systems and frameworks. And now we are seeing, I think we're seeing it because one, our, our world is so connected with, you know, that we can see it in real time. Um, but we are seeing the outpicturing of that unprocessed stuff over generations. Right. And I think we see it not only in our interactions with one another, but we see it in our bodies, our bodies that hold stress, a lot of it intergenerational trauma and stress that have been just perpetuated literally in the cells of our body. I read some other day that like, like something that was activated in our parents, those cells, mm. then the same sort of thing gets activated in us. And it's just yeah. this, it, I think we're so like we talk about it. So we're so interconnected, not only in real time, but interconnected like back in time too. Yeah, that that thing gets like imprinted in your DNA, right? Yeah. I mean, it comes with you. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Which I think is mm. um, the challenging news, but then it also is a really powerful, uh, empowering news that then we can begin through the work that we're doing now. Yeah in our own individual lives, in our own processing of our own stuff and the collectively processing and collectively supporting one another, um, that we're actually uh, activating that, that sort of uh, stuff in generations after. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're right. We may be carrying around the burden of trying to heal generations worth of, of trauma and, and process generations worth of grief. And, and we also have the opportunity to be the first ones to pass on healing and, and uh, yeah, like a whole other experience. How cool is that? I mean, yeah. that yeah, that's pretty like, powerful. Like for real. It's not like woo woo. Like, uh, I mean, this I, is like, yeah, it's like science, real science, real science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stuff. yeah. And it's yeah. so, I mean, it's, well, I mean, we get that too. Like when you enter a room, like our energy is imprinted in a room. If you ever enter a room and you're like, oh, there's something crazy happened in this place, right? Or you <laughs> enter a room and you're like, oh, wow, this is mm -hmm. really peaceful and this is really positive energy, positive vibe. And it's, I mean, it's the same sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of mentioned this a moment or two ago, but, you know, we, we called this episode Good Grief and, and kind of in jest, like, you know, Good Grief, Charlie Brown, right? Yeah. Or, or whatever. <laughs> um, but it does make me wonder because when you see something like that in writing you don't necessarily know the inflection or tone or whatever. Right. Is, is there such a thing as good grief is there bad grief um but I, but i do wonder and, I, and this conversation is kind of starting to go in that direction already anyway is there is there good grief like can is i, I mean i i think part of the you know, that pitfall we talked about before of like grief is death and that is awful and bad. And we don't talk about it because don't bring it up. Don't make anybody think about that or feel that way or whatever. And so grief was bad. It was bad to have grief. Yeah. Is that is that also changed uh, or do we I mean, maybe we just totally had it wrong and it wasn't that ever. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, I think that all grief is valid grief. So there's not a right way and a wrong way to grieve. So whatever experience someone's having in that moment is the experience they're having in that moment. I think for me, um, the question that kind of comes at the forefront is like, what is the purpose of grief? Like, does it serve mm -hmm. a purpose? And so in that respect, yes, I think grief serves lots of purposes. Now, I think it serves purposes um, that are unique to each and every one of us, you know, based on our experience. But I think the overall purpose of grief is to help us navigate a life that looks different than we thought it was going to be. Yeah. It actually help us navigate the, the ups and the downs and the shifts and the curves of life. And yeah. so I think we talk a lot about, you know, the stages of grief, you know, there's the, you know, there's a five stage model and the, there's an expanded seven stage model. Um, 
which I think sometimes can be very limiting. Um, <laughs> but but I think it actually is it, it, it serves its purpose because it does give an example of how grief can show up. So it gives us some tangible right. expressions. Yeah. Yeah. And it also kind of we like to put stages on things because they're like, oh, if there's a beginning, then yet there's an end. There's wow. An end. Yeah. An end yeah. Insight, yeah. Right? I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that allowing it to show up in ways that are going to support us, I think, is the thing, right? I think that is the good grief. Not that we label it good or bad, and I think we just kind of do that for sure. um, just for fun. But I think if we're going to label something good or bad, then all grief is good. That's not saying all the experiences mm. that lead to that are experiences that we're like, oh, yay, I really am glad that happened. Yeah. But understanding that it is a natural process that our mind and our body and spirit go through yeah. so that it is good in the fact that it is the natural flow of things, just like our life is good, just yeah. like all things are good, right? Because it is the natural state of things. And so grief is the natural state. And so that's why we have such um, challenges when we suppress it or try to run through it or try to cover it up because it interrupts that natural state of how our bodies navigate things. And then that shows up in all different sorts of ways. It can show up in um, challenges with our mental health, our emotional health, our relationships, our physical health, because it's not the natural state to avoid that process. Yeah. 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 You know, that's interesting because it makes me think about some of my own grieving and like what I have, I almost hesitate to say this. What I've learned in my grieving process. That's okay. Um, it's okay yeah. to learn stuff. No, I know it is. It's <laughs> just, it's it's I I don't want to make it sound like the look for the gift. Oh no, nonsense. we don't want to go we ain't gonna go no, there. No. Um so that that's not the takeaway, but the takeaway is um I realized I grieved so hard because I I loved that much. Mm, yeah. Right. And, and I think that's a really, that was a really different perspective for me when it first, like when I had that aha the first time and then again and again and again and again. Um, but I think culturally, well, culturally, there's only like three emotions anyway, right? Like that's like what we're allowed to acknowledge, which is obviously I would not hope true. I, not true. <laughs> yeah. Um, that there are so many more expressions of emotion than, than what culturally we are shown or told we can have or are ones that are acceptable and grief certainly is not an experience that has been acceptable in a lot of places yeah um openly grieving in my history you know growing up and whatnot like you grieved at the funeral mildly and that was about it you know and it had to look a certain way right yeah it had to look a certain way right right right. um but i think that also goes right along with the idea that that life is supposed to look a certain way and you're supposed Mm -hmm. to be happy and only show the facade and the whole thing. And, um, you know, don't show anybody the there's good emotions, bad emotions. Don't show the bad ones. Those don't count. We're not going to talk about them. You don't have them. Nobody knows. Right. And so I think grief being a bad emotion, sadness being a bad emotion, this is not something that we, that we show. And so it gets separated from, the other, the good ones, yeah, right. Whereas my experience, <laughs> you know, kind of brought those all back together again, and I realized, like, a grief is not just sadness, right? Grief is a lot of different experiences, a lot of different emotions. Um, but they're not only are they not separate and not bad, but they're so like sadness is directly connected to to not necessarily happiness, but I think to love, right? I think grieving is directly connected to like caring and, and um, loving. And I mean, so many Mm -hmm. other experiences and, Oh, this hurt so badly because I cared that much because I love that much because we were in this close of a relationship. Yeah. And so grief, grief was like, Oh, wow. Right. It was a reminder like that meant so much to me. And it just did. because and in this case, we're, we're talking about death, right? Um, that person died. 
and that I don't want that to go away. And so grief was almost like, like there was a point in my grieving process where like, I didn't want to let it go because mm. it was like, Oh, this is what I have of that person right now. Mm, yeah. Right. And so I don't know that that qualifies as like good or good or bad or whatever, but, but there is, it's a very flipped perspective from what I used to have mm. on what I thought grief was. And I think it puts in a different, a very different perspective, like all of the other things that come along with this big label that we say is grief, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, all that's allowed, all that's connected, all of that is like, I don't know, normal. <laughs> if there is, thing is normal, there. like all yeah. of that's normal. The whole thing is normal. Yeah. You know? I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and they said something, and it was, I don't know if you ever hear someone say something like, Oh my goodness, I never thought about that. We were talking about grief. We we're talking about collective grief. And the, uh, they mentioned that we think grief is always in relationship to something bad happening, but you can have grief over good things. Mm -hmm. So, for example, after grad school, oh. a little bit of grief. That's a good thing. Graduating from grad school, that's great. But it's, it's anytime there's a right. transition. Yeah. A transition from one thing to the next, that middle space is grief. Sure. And it, you know, it looks different, I think, and it shows up differently than our traditional sort of like what we're talking about, you know, with death and things like that type of grief. But yeah. anytime there's a transition, there is an experience and a shift in our body and our mind and our spirits that is grief. And yeah. so I was like, wow, that is so profound, so simple, but yet it's profound because it just reiterates the fact that grief is the way that we navigate transitions. Right. I mean, that is that, That's, that whole yeah, process yeah. is necessary to mm -hmm. help us navigate transitions. It becomes this like really nuanced experience that allows us to flow in from one experience to the next and then begin to integrate those experiences and going forward. Right. And so like today, you and I, we have never done Tuesday, April 23rd, at 3.37. It's true. Yeah. We've never done it. <laughs> right? And so we're integrating right. all of our experiences up until now to be present in this moment and then the next moment, the next moment. So it's like, it's just very interesting Yeah. Um, how right. that shows up. So I think that when we talk about good grief, it is that process that supports us. Yeah. And so that's why it's good because it is supportive. Ooh of our overall experience where well, we talk about wholeness a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like that is, I mean, that's the Cracker Jack prize, but man, <laughs> some well, but of that, that can be hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm just noticing now, cause I have not thought about that before. That's a new idea to me in, in a sense, um, in the sense that, that every moment of change and life is change mm -hmm. that every moment of change, there's grief processed or not recognized or not there there is yeah. grief of what we knew <clears throat> right whether grief. good or bad right or whatever yeah, we label yeah, good or bad right. yeah grief over what we were used to over what was comfortable over how we related to each other um and, and that grief is grief then i think becomes like the process that moves us along that moves us forward mm-hmm yeah. That if we don't grieve, we get stuck in something that doesn't exist anymore. And 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 so grief is the grief is actually the thing. If we, I think, here's what I'm what I'm. Hear me out. Hear me out. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay, we're, we're, we're listening. We're listening. <laughs> um, that if we stay stuck and like refuse to grieve, like we want what was, we want what we knew, mm. and we and and there are times where we can pretend our way into staying in those moments. Um, that that is actually what brings the pain. Yeah. Whereas grieving, the process of grieving, I think, is actually the thing that allows us to work through the change, to work through the the loss or the 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 uncomfortable, to move into a new way of being. And like you're saying, I think ultimately integrate a new thing, yeah. integrate something that was into a new way or a new experience. I think maybe grief is that which 
alleviates the pain. Yeah, because I mean, it's the natural state, right? Yeah. And I, I think that, huh. I think that the fear, at least, you know, for me in times where I've avoided kind of feeling the thing is that you feel like you're going to be swallowed by it and that yeah. it will never, you'll never come up. Mm. And I think also understanding that grief is never going to leave. So yeah. if the goal is not to get rid of, that's a little bit of freedom, yeah. right? <laughs> I always like that. I always think about it. Our life is like this house. And sometimes grief, especially in like the really cute stages or like right after something has happened, grief is like laying on the front in the front room on the front couch on the good furniture, laying there doing what it wants to do for all to see. Yeah. Right. And then some days as we get further and further away from that experience, grief may be in a closet mm. and we may open the door. Oh, there it is. And it kind of comes out for the day. Sneaks up on you. Damn it. Yeah, it. Or it goes back in. Right. So it, yeah. it, it's not, it does not encompass the entire house. Yeah. It just changes rooms. And so for me, I was like, like the process of moving through the process of grief and, and integration and healing or whatever you want to call it. I like integration because I think that's the way it shows up because we integrate yeah. it. We don't let go of it. Yeah. Um, it, it just allows us to move it to different room of the house. And sometimes we can bring it out and talk to it and it can go back. Right. And so it's like, it just changes our perspective and our relationship to it. When yeah. we allow, like you said, to feel it. Yeah. When we resist is then we resist that natural process. And that is where yeah. uh, the pain happens. That's where um, the impact to like all sorts of things happen individually and mm. collectively. I mean, we see it like the collective impact of unprocessed stuff or an unwillingness to sit in discomfort. I mean, we see that all the time. You know, the other thing that's coming up for me now too, I, and I don't, I don't recall if I've put this thought together before the past or not, but I think I've usually thought of, and, and I think this is probably true for a lot of people. I think I've usually thought of grief as a thing, like a very like dense, tangible thing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I would have to, work my way through mm. or with uh, it's not like you ever really come out the other side or it's like right. you come out the other side then turn around and go back and work at it at an angle and come back to the other side or whatever i don't know um but this conversation is sounding more like grief is actually a process grief is not actually a thing like the relationship was the thing grief is the process of like you're saying, integrating grief is the process of working through, of looking at, of reevaluating. Grief is, grief is actually the process that carries us when we are grieving. I guess yeah. a relationship or an event or a way of life or whatever it was, right? Like, oh wow, what a different. And maybe this is super obvious for other people. I don't know, but like, if grief is a process. Like if, if grief is actually the process mm -hmm. and not a thing, like it's an activity, then it's a whole other kind of, uh, I mean, I have a whole other kind of outlook on it, but also it's a whole other kind of experience because it's not like, all right, it's me against grief, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like me and grief. Grief is going to, grief actually is, is, a, is a tool. Grief is, is helping. Grief is, yeah. uh, uh, is the, the, the activity of moving through from what was to what is now. Mm -hmm. um, I think in a, in a healthy way when I let it, <laughs> but what a difference, what a difference to think instead of grief being a thing to yeah. grief being an activity or a process or, well, and it's also unique. It's both universal and unique, mm. right? So universal, we, 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 you know, everyone collectively experiences grief. Like yeah. we're not getting out of this, of this life without the experience. <laughs> so, I yeah. mean, anyone who says, oh, I have experience. No, we're, we're always doing it because that's just the nature of, of life. And so it's like, but it's individual because it yeah. can show up differently for me, that process. So there, we have to be careful not to be like prescriptive about the process. Like, okay, this is the grieving process. Now everyone has to yeah. go through this process. Right. But I think it is, hmm. it, it flows with you as a unique individual and how that shows up for you. Yeah. 
Some people may show up as certain expressions of emotion. Some people may show up as certain uh, seeking out of, of different types of connection that are supportive um, or different types of activities that are, mm-hmm. are, are allowing, that are supporting them, right? So it shows up differently. And so I think that is also the beauty of the process because it doesn't ha- it can look exactly how I need it to look. Yeah. So if I need to take a breath and do a whole lot of binging Netflix until I'm ready to uh, sit with the emotion of it, that is absolutely fine. That is a process of grief. Yeah. Right. And so. And that can be different like day to day yeah. or moment to moment or week to right, week. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. it, we, we people talk about um, you know these coping mechanisms and as if it's a bad it's thing. A, I know. <laughs> coping There's a mechanisms reason they're coping are great things. Yeah numbing yeah. things nothing wrong with it right in the moment because sometimes our bodies and our minds we can only take so much at one time and yeah. it's okay even in a process of grief it's okay to just sit for a moment and look out and look back sit on a rock and look back at, at the process so, thus far yeah. like we don't always have to be processing we don't always have to be growing we don't always have to be analyzing every emotion or experience right we can just sit sometimes and that's also part of the process or or um, take a day and ignore it. Yes. If you need to, right? Like yes. <laughs> I had a therapist one time one time that said, you know, especially when situations get to where like you actually have to like do things in your life as well, but then you also want to give space yeah. to feel things. Yeah. That you give yourself a time like between 1 and 3, I'm going to experience this emotion as hard as I want to, as whatever I want yeah. you know, from one to three. Right. And so it's like, it's really interesting, um, which is a great um, incremental coping mechanism because sometimes it can be too much to look at the whole thing sure. at once. Yeah. But if we can incrementally allow ourselves to experience, and then also it, it, it is a tool that you don't feel like you're going to get it sucked into it because you, Oh, I have a time for it. Yeah. And that, that's just one like thing that worked for me in the past. And so that's what the reason I bring that up is like, that's kind of weird and oddball, but like that, <laughs> that was unique. That worked for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, you can really, it's really empowering that this process can look different for everyone and, and that's okay. And yeah. we can learn to support each other in our processes without saying, Oh, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and to do what, works for you because the other flip side of that is am i grieving right <laughs> and looking looking for what is this supposed to look what am i supposed to do how am i what like stage you am i in what, did i do the right do stage? Works, yeah, yeah you just do what works for you and and be as present as you're able to be in that moment and that could look like a whole lot of things and none of it's you're not hurting right. nobody i, I think yeah, you're, right you're all right well, and i think it's important too that we don't perpetuate the myths societally that have been created around this this uh process of grief as if it is this like thing lurking in the corner yeah right this it's like this entity that is imposing itself upon us and there's all sorts yep. of myths i mean we could go like all sorts of myths you know that oh you should take this long or you should be over it by now yeah or if you don't cry you're not you're not sad you know all the all the right. things yeah and it's like if we can like not perpetuate that then it really does create space for us to show up and allow that process to be as it is, right? And so we can, when we could show up authentic, authentically in the process, I think that we're much more inclined to allow the process. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good grief. Good grief. So to close this out, we kind of touched on this in pieces, but just to wrap it up, because we do love like, love me a good list, a good countdown, a good like oh, yeah. top three or top one or whatever. Um, what what is like the number one thing that you think we can do to develop habits of good grief? No, in the context of good grief being like what we've talked about right now, right? Like good grief, like knowing that grief can be the thing to help us. What's what do you think the you know somebody's like feeling totally stuck? What's one thing? Hey, do this and just. Oh, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> but I think I, I don't know that there's one thing, but I think there is one thing to keep in mind. How about mm-hmm. that? Yeah. That you're okay. You can't do it wrong. Where you are is where you need to be. Yeah. Stuck or not, right? 
and that this experience is a natural process. And if we can sit in that uncomfortableness for just two seconds longer than we think we can, then we will begin to um, kind of experience, um, I think, the prize of authenticity, which is like being able to like step into our experience in a way that represents our authentic self, right? And so I think that um, that we don't have to show up a certain way. It doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't have to be a certain way. Um, that it's just for now. It's not forever. I tell myself that a lot, right? So I think yeah. that's a great, that's a great, literally, if that's what you can say in the moment, this is just right now. It's not forever. Yeah. There's some space that's created in that. Yeah. Some space. And you may not be able to step into it tomorrow or the day after, but there will be at some point this upward swing and you'll be like, oh, how'd I get here? I was way back there, right? And so I think that for me, that is the mantra that has gotten me through. Yeah. Just for now, it's not forever. Yeah. yeah. Ah, deep breath, everybody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, um. you know, I think we, we we giggle in moments to kind of just move the energy around think, a little yeah. bit yeah um but it is it can be a heavy thing and it can be a whole lot of other things too but it it's um i think grief allowing the grief process is very worthwhile so yeah yeah, yeah it is it is for now it is for now that's a love that idea that is yeah. very helpful <laughs> <laughs> Very, very helpful. Lots so, of things. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll we'll have to make that a sound clip and and I don't know, share it somehow. That like that explanation you gave at the end. That was perfect, man. Like yeah. if I could have that on one of those like the it's easy button on my desk and just replay the it's only for now. Like just you're okay. Now. You're okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. Well, thank you for oh man, the amazing uh thoughts and sharing. And thank you all for tuning in and listening as always and hopefully you can come away with some good grief some good grief um and yeah what what an amazing experience of the in-between as uncomfortable as it might be that's it man that is the in-between so ah, thanks for being here thanks for listening and we will see you next time at the in-between where shift happens Nobody really enjoys being in the in-between, but thanks for being here anyway. We may not have found all of the answers, but certainly some. And maybe more importantly, a little shift has happened. Because that is really what it's all about. Learning to be curious, authentic, and yes, maybe even a tad bit vulnerable. And the beauty of it all is that we are not alone in the in-between. So until next time, we hope a lot of shift happens.